Hello, this is Kevin Kalmus with Nested Knowledge, here to demonstrate how to manage organizations within the Nested Knowledge software. Uh, in order to learn how to create, you'll have to see the previous video, but we're going to hop right in. To manage members and templates in my organization, I go to the Organizations tab once I've signed in, and I select the organization that I would like to manage. Uh, briefly, if I want to adjust the organization details, such as our logo, name, or URL, I can edit that in organization details, but the key functions of organization management can be found in these panes across the top. The first major function of organizations is to enable easy addition of both access privileges and of nest ownership by a given organization at the nest level. In order to do so, I first need to add users to my organization, and I do so by inviting them. So I uh, select invite, I type in their email, I identify them as either a member, so someone who will be given access rights to underlying nests uh, if our organization has access, and who will be able to use templates within nests, or an organizational admin who will have access to this organization management page and the additional right to both invite new users or admins and create and manage those templates. Once they have accepted uh, their, their status as a member or as an admin, they will be listed in this uh, manage users page and I will at that point be able to adjust their status as an admin or a user. In addition, I can manage nests from this page. So by clicking here, I can see every nest to which the organization nested knowledge has access. And you can see that our access rights um, as users uh, uh, in some cases or as owners in others. And the difference between access and owner is that any nest where my organization has access means that every member or admin is added as a user in the underlying nest. Whereas if we have identified a nest owner, uh, and this must be done on the nest level by the owner of that given nest, the single individual owner and not the organizational owner. Once there has been an organizational owner identified, then we will have the additional capability to use the templates that this organization has created uh, and we will also have the right to uh, uh, do certain management tasks on Nest, such as delete them uh, from the organization level. I will also note that if you have a paid organization and you have members within it, their Nests are automatically marked as owned by you so long as they are created by that user. All right. I'm also going to cover templates later in this video, uh, or actually the creation and management of templates. But before we do so, I would like to jump into a specific nest and show you how you can manage nest ownership and access rights. So if we go to uh, one of our underlying nests, the place that this management takes place is under settings and you need to toggle from user to organization level access. And this can be completed for either auto lit or synthesis. Uh, but if we toggle from user to organization, you can see that nested knowledge is the owner of this nest. Uh, I am uh, only the uh, individual nest owner is able to identify an organizational owner. But again, if you are a paid organization, any nest that your users create will automatically be owned by your organization. If I want to add other organizations, there cannot be multiple uh, organizational owners of a nest, but I could type in the name of other organizations and select them and they will be added as uh, uh, having access rights. That means that any admin, owner, or user of that organization now has access rights to this nest. If I want to identify them as the owner, um, I must be the nest owner myself, but I could give ownership of this nest to another organization, at which point we would lose access to the templates of, uh, of the nest and knowledge organization. Now, uh, let me show you how you can then turn around and use those templates that you've created in a nest that your organization owns. So having confirmed that this is owned by nested knowledge, I can now uh, set up a protocol template from nest home. In order to do so, all I need to do is select edit. And then from the editor, uh, I select templates. This will enable me to view all templates that have been created by the nested knowledge organization and import them in a single click. If I do so, this will be appended at the end of any already drafted content, but uh, you can of course delete any content that exists once you've copied in this template. And our recommendation is that you then use these 
uh, templatable uh, protocols to ensure that you have consistency in how you are describing the methods of your reviews. The second place that you can use templates is in screening. So if we go to configure screening, we can import exclusion reason template sets. Uh, to do so, I simply select import set and from the list of exclusion reason templates, I select the uh, set of exclusion reasons that I want to import and then I will select import selected. Once I have done so, these will be added to the full exclusion reason list, at which point I will be able to edit or delete those exclusion reasons as well. So you do not need to adopt every single exclusion reason that is from the imported set, but uh, in order to edit them, first import and then edit them once uh, from the list once you are within your nest. Again, the major purpose of this is to both save you work in configuring exclusion reasons, but also to promote harmonization of your methods across different nests that your organization creates. The last, and in my opinion, the most exciting place that we have uh, uh, hierarchies, uh, sorry, that we have templates that you can import is tagging hierarchies. Uh, you can see that we've built out a rather intensive hierarchy here, but if I were starting from scratch and I wanted to import a new hierarchy, I could press import hierarchy. I can view all templates that uh, the nested knowledge organization has created. And then I can import either the entire hierarchy, or if I select one root node, I can select, I can elect to only import one of the uh, sub hierarchies within this. Once I have either imported the entire hierarchy or uh, from that single root tag, it will populate these uh, uh, hierarchies to the right of existing tags, or if it is an empty nest, then it will populate it with the uh, uh, with just the hierarchical uh, template tags. From there, you can then edit the templated tags uh, to reflect your exact nest use. And again, the use case here is both to save you work and to harmonize the concepts and the structures that you are using in your tagging hierarchies. All right, that is how you add and manage organizations within a nest and then how you use protocol exclusion reason and tagging hierarchy templates to speed up your work and harmonize your methods. Lastly, let's jump back to organizations and show how you create those. To create protocol templates, simply select protocol templates here, and then you can click add template, name that template, and then once you go into it, you'll be able, you'll be able to edit it. To edit an existing uh, protocol, simply click on that protocol of interest and it will pop up um, of course, if I created a new one, it would also have popped in here, and I will be able to edit any of the content in, th in this template. These edits will only be available in new nests that are created. It will not affect any nest in which, your pre in which this template has previously been used. And that goes for protocols, exclusion reasons, and tagging templates. To create an exclusion reason uh, template, all I need to do is click the exclusion, uh, exclusion here, and then select Add Template. Then I will be prompted to name it. And once I have done so, I will be given the opportunity to add exclusion reasons to that set. So I simply add reasons that I might exclude articles. And these will be uh, the exclusion reasons that are automatically imported if this uh, template set is used. Lastly, for tagging hierarchies, we have some additional functionality to make this process easier. Since protocol template drafting and exclusion reason sets are easy to draft, but tagging hierarchies may be uh, work intensive to create. To, cr uh, to add a new template, I select add template, I name it, and once I have named it, I can view it here. And you'll see that I actually have an import hierarchy button here. This is to enable me to use existing hierarchies to create templates. So you can almost think about this as a cycle where Users build nests that have hierarchies. Those nests uh, hierarchies are available for me as an organization owner or administrator to use as fodder for my hierarchy uh, template creation. Um, let's say that I really like our basilar artery uh, stroke uh, hierarchy. I can import this and then edit its contents to turn it into a new uh, template. Say that I wanted to also identify, for instance, uh, you know, location. I can now add a location tag and populate new tags underneath it. Um, I will also note if you used form-based tagging, uh, the questions that you uh, uh, configure can be created here. And if you created them in your underlying nest, then they will be populated into the template as well. So form-based tagging is preserved in hierarchical templates. 
Once I have created this uh, template hierarchy, all I need to do is click out and it will be saved and available to any in any nest that is owned by this organization. Uh, and with that, I believe we've covered all of the key activities that you should as a nest owner or an administrator uh, be aware of. Mm -hmm.